Philip Mantle is a UFO researcher and author and the publisher of Flying Disc Press. What a wonderful name for a publishing house. Philip, thanks uh, very much for joining us. As I look out at the universe, as I do uh, every evening, uh, I find it literally absurd to imagine that there's no life anywhere in the multiple universes of billions of planets that have existed for billions of years. Is that how you feel about it? Absolutely, George, and, and most scientists as well. I mean, our knowledge of the universe has expanded over this last 20 years or so, and it's now estimated that in the visible universe, we have two trillion galaxies. And within those two trillion galaxies, of course, there are countless stars and planets. Uh, I don't know what the next one up is from a trillion, George, to be honest, but it's an awful lot. <laughs> so, there's, you know, the, the universe is much larger than we ever imagined and much older as well. That's also been recently revised. We're talking, you know, billions of years. Uh, and here we are in amongst it all. Yes, hallelujah, I say. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, uh, weaken my religious belief, far from it. Uh, the idea that all of these trillions uh, of planets uh, and, and galaxies uh, came into being entirely uh, as a chance, uh, by chance and from nothing is certainly far more far-fetched than having a belief in God. But I'll not tempt you down that road unless you want to go down it, of course. Uh, but the, the idea that on only one tiny planet, in only one galaxy, life would develop is inherently ridiculous, no? Absolutely. Absolutely. Whether you believe in creation or, or you know, evolution, it, it really doesn't make any difference. If, you know, if you believe in creation, then why would you know, a supreme being create such a large universe and have us as the only, you know, intelligent species uh, in it. Same with, you know, evolution. We know that the, the chemical compounds that make up you and I, George, are in abundance everywhere. They're not specific just to our small part of the universe. They are everywhere. And we know through study on this planet where you find water, you know, H2O, there is life. And of course, hydrogen and oxygen uh, is in abundance everywhere in the universe. So the probability of life existing elsewhere is, is, is you know, pretty, pretty good. Whether it looks anything like you or me, though, George, that's a, diff that's a different matter altogether. <laughs> yes, let's come to that. Uh, were you impressed by the... Uh, display in the Mexican Congress last week? Not at all. The, 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 the things put on display in the Mexican Congress are a hoax. They are fake. And they were presented by a gentleman called Jaime Masson, who's a well-known hoaxer and has been at it for, for years and years and years, and yet they've fallen for it again. Uh, why is another question. And, uh, you know, I honestly don't know. But these are fake, George, so take no notice of them whatsoever. What should we be looking out for then? What, uh, if any, because uh, by the same token, if there are trillions of galaxies and whatever, as you say, the number after trillion is, I don't know myself, gazillion, <laughs> maybe, Brazilian, I have no idea. Uh, but if there are uh, all these places to choose, it might well be that nobody ever visited uh, us, uh, this uh, tiny little planet. But is there any evidence or reason to believe or suspect, in your view, well, uh, well, that I mean, any extraterrestrial intelligence ever came here? That's a good question. I mean, our own Ministry of Defence will tell you that they have had sightings reported to them that they cannot they cannot identify. They're not going to say they're extraterrestrial, they just remain unidentified. Same just this week, uh, NASA 
have set up their own, you know, investigation. And again, their, their head said, you know, there are sightings that we, we, we don't know what they are. They remain unidentified. And uh, also the, the American government set up their own UFO study separate from NASA, although they will coordinate with each other. And again, they have released a number of things statistically saying you know, there's a number of the things that's been reported to us, primarily by military people, you know, usually pilots, uh, that, that you know we can't figure out at the moment. We, they leave us scratching our head. But you don't have to just rely on, on military personnel. Uh, George, there are people from all walks of life who just uh, about their own daily business uh, call and count, encounter something that, you know, again, after careful investigation, leaves civilian researchers like myself uh, scratching my head. And I'm, I'm fairly skeptical, George. I'm, I'm not a believer in that respect. Um, you know, uh, but there are certain things that you really do puzzle you. Whether they're extraterrestrial or not remains to be seen, but certainly puzzling. So the U in UFO still stands for unidentified. Mm. What would be some of the most interesting uh, things that have puzzled you? Well, you, you mentioned Steven Spielberg, you know, in, in the introduction. Steven Spielberg's favorite case, because, he, you know, he, wrote, he made the movie Close Encounters. The phrase Close Encounters came from a UFO researcher, Dr. J. Allen Hynek. He worked on uh, the United States Air Force Project Blue Book. And he investigated a case in a place called Pascagoula, Mississippi, in 1973 where two local fishermen had a close encounter, which we know today as an alien abduction. And they were in, interrogated in the sheriff's office at, uh, uh, the following day at Keesler Air Force Base. And since then, you know, uh, a number of other witnesses in and around the area at the same time, George, have now stepped forward and come out of the woodwork. Where this location was, where these two gentlemen were fishing that night, it's not an out of the way place. It's right by Highway 90. There's a huge motorway bridge that goes over the river. There's boats coming and going. And people have said, well, I saw that thing that night as well. So, you know, it, it is one of the standout cases. Uh, and it was Alan, Dr. Alan Hynek's favorite case. And he investigated, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of them for the Air Force and then as a civilian researcher. Sometimes you read that uh, ancient phenomena, the wonders of the world, uh, the pyramids, for example, uh, the Inca and Mayan civilizations display a precision of, of geometry and uh, astronomy uh, that seem, on the face of it, to have been beyond what the levels of education and scientific uh, knowledge and indeed tools, uh, and, and including tools of measurement, uh, would have allowed it. Some believe that these are phenomena which seem to reflect a fleeting visit, perhaps, of people from other worlds. What do you think? Well, yeah, it, it, it's known as the ancient astronaut theory, you know, and it started with a chap by the name of Eric von Daniken uh, in his book, Chariots of the Gods. The subtitle was, you know, was is God an astronaut? You know, in other words, it's not some superior being in heaven. It's actually a space-faring, you know, uh, alien from from elsewhere. But um, you know, there is no positive proof to support that. Uh, we do realize that um, you know, our ancient ancestors were just as clever as you or I, George. Our brain didn't work any differently but they uh, they worked within the environment they had at that time. And yes, there are puzzles, um, but we must go back, for example, look at the ancient Greeks. All our mathematics is based on, 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 on the Greeks. They even measured uh, the circumference of the earth uh, without sophisticated tools. You know, they knew it was round. And yet you still have uh, strange people today who will argue that the earth is flat, uh, which is beyond me. It really is. But you know the ancient astronaut theory is 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 a is is a nice one, uh, and it would be nice if it was true. But again, 
it lacks that smoking gun, George, that one piece of evidence that would um, that would prove it. Uh, but you know, it's it's nice, it's and and it will continue. Of that, I've no doubt. Of course, it's possible, Philip, that that uh, aliens took a look at the mess we are making <laughs> of this little world of ours and decided that we are not the kind of neighbours they want to get friendly with. That's possible, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it yourself, George, you know, you're, you're a passing tourist alien and then look at the, the feuds and the wars and the starvation <laughs> and, you know, natural catastrophes on one thing and another. And you think, well, perhaps we'll go somewhere else for a vacation. I'm, I'm, I'm not coming here. <laughs> so maybe a quick look and say, see you later, fellas, you know. You wouldn't blame them, would you? Philip, I love your no-nonsense way of talking, and I'm officially appointing you right here and now. I hope you'll accept, as the mother of all talk shows, UFO expert and spokesman. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. It's been a pleasure, my pleasure. and a laugh my pleasure, talking George. to you. Yeah, my, pl my pleasure and nice to talk to you. All the best.